celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett in voice only because we'll uh, start our video really rolling with the citizen panel in about 25 minutes from right now. But as we do every so often, got to check in with an old friend that we just love to sit around and kick stuff around with. Ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the funniest men I know, one of the most intelligent people I know, and his cataracts are ripe. They're ripe. It's like you said, you got to wait till they're ripe. So. It's Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. uh, you were you were telling me, uh, but between calls because we record a couple of these at a time. I have a, yes, about my I have a cataract in my left eye, which uh, now apparently is uh, to the point where they could take it off. But well, let me take you back to about the 1950s, and if your doctor said you needed a cataract operation, okay. To begin with, it was a very lengthy procedure. And once you did it, you had to sleep every night with, in a block that kept your head still. Okay? And that was how the whole thing worked. All right? So that's what you have to look forward to. A month of, <laughs> of, of sleeping straight up with your head in this kind of brace, this block that keeps it from moving. So that's that's how... Well, no, actually today it's a little different than that. It takes about 15 minutes, and by the next, they put a cup on your eye overnight, and the next morning you go to the doctor again, he takes the cup off, looks at it, and says, okay, keep using these drops. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's nothing. I had both eyes done. Uh, At the first, same time? No. I had, the first one got ripe, and then I couldn't see. I could, I, everything in the center of my vision was blurry. Uh, and they said, that's a cataract. So we went and had the cataract operation, and it was no problem. And I wasn't afraid of it because my wife had already had one. So I, I knew what to expect. And then uh, about a year later, two years later, the other one seemed to be getting ripe, and he said, ah, well, let's do it. And he, you know, he, he like on Wednesdays or something at this clinic that he rents out or something, really does... Um, it's kind of like cataracts or us, you know, <laughs> he does like, there were 20 people there all lying there. Next, boom, you go in, <laughs> um, out, cup on the eye, you know, so I had this done twice and, and quite frankly, it, it really did improve my reading vision, even though it isn't supposed to improve your vision at all. But sometimes the side effect is that you can, you can read a lot of things. My, the, 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 Strength of the glasses I used went down in half. Okay. You know, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's no big deal. Just go get it, and, you know. You wear a cup on your eye for a day like that retard in high school who used to always come to school because he had something wrong with his eye and had some kind of patch. <laughs> or, you remember those kids? You know. Yeah, there's always one. Yeah. I think it was me. But it, it was <laughs> you. Were you the kind of kid who got beaten up in school, or were you the kind of kid that beat people up, or were you the kind of guy they just never paid attention to? No, yeah, I was kind of the uh, somewhere in between because I think I you survived with. I think some of the kids found me funny, so I think I would have gotten beat up if I hadn't been funny to them. So were you funny so you wouldn't get beaten up? That might have been it. Yeah, because a lot of people I know who were comics said that they started being comics in school because they found that if you could make somebody laugh, they couldn't hit you. Yeah, they'd almost protect you if they thought you were really funny. So. Yeah, yeah, but uh, they didn't. They never. They always kind of made fun of me, uh, because uh, my father was a musician. All right, and so where did my father take me? To he didn't take me to baseball games. My father never took me to a baseball game. I can't remember my father ever watching or listening to a baseball game. But he took me to the ballet and the symphony. Yeah. Well, this didn't play too well in school. So what'd you do this weekend? <laughs> well, I went to the symphony with my father. What are you, queer? <laughs> 
It's not required a savage beating. <laughs> yes. I, well, I've told people that, you know, uh, I always tell gay people, I know what it's like to grow up gay. And they say, how come you're not gay? Because I'm terminally straight. <laughs> and I said, because everybody in high school thought I was. And so I got all the abuse you would get if you were gay. Yeah. You know, what, I queer something? That was the worst thing they could say about you. What, I queer something? I didn't even know what that meant at one point. You know, neither did they, actually. Um, but everybody assumed that I was, like, gay because I didn't play baseball. I wasn't into sports particularly, you know. But I went to the symphony and I went to the ballet. You know, so. That, that, you know, the whole, uh, whole high school was just a, a nightmare for me, as I recall. I was very fat and just uh, very withdrawn. You were fat? I can't even imagine yeah. you fat. Oh yeah, I got. I'll show you a picture sometime. I was quite fat. Really? And how did you? What, how'd you lose it? You just grew up and you lost it. I just. I went from uh, drinking uh, twelve cans of Coke a day to one. <laughs> That's how I lost and, my weight. And that that just alone made you lose weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the day when there wasn't uh, wasn't uh, diet Coke? Yeah, we, I don't think we had them when I was a kid. I think they had the first thing that wasn't a tab, which was oh, god oh, awful. Oh, God, it was the worst. In fact, you remember Bob Goldthwaite? You know, he, Who, used, he, he drank that stuff like, oh. He used to be famous. Um, <laughs> uh, he drank tab, you may remember. He would bring in two six-packs. And during my show, he would down the whole two six-packs of tab. Now, of course, part of the reason is it, it just like Coca-Cola, had caffeine in it. But it had something else in it. One day he decided he wasn't going to do tab anymore, and his head started ringing and throbbing. I mean, there were withdrawal symptoms from tab, and they were horrid. He finally had to do some to, he had to go down to six cans a day and then down to three and down to two. He weaned the, himself off. Yeah, it was like a drug. It was the worst. It was, it was the worst. Uh, wow. That's uh, incredible. And that was their idea of diet soda. And I don't know why it tasted so bad because they had saccharin back in the day, you know, and that wasn't a bad tasting substance. Yeah, the tab was, the, I think, the worst thing I ever tasted was tab. It was just... Yeah. And then they came out with um, a Diet Coke. Ooh. And that replaced tab completely, although they kept making tab for a while. And now they still make tab, but it's an energy drink. Oh, really? Yeah, they kept the name. You know, why they call it tab, I have no idea, but it was horrid. I mean, I know that I relished a sugar-free Coca-Cola because I was addicted to Coca-Cola, right? It was the best drink so, ever, yeah. So tab was like at least, you know, it was it was sugar-free, and you would do it, and it was just, it was, I can't remember how bad it tasted, but all I know is I couldn't stand it. Yeah, it, just, it was like a glass of chemicals. Yeah, yeah. And then they uh, they upped the ante where they came out with um, um, uh, sugar-free Coke. Uh, and it was, they used, what did they use in it at the time? There was another kind of substance. Aspartame. Uh, no, 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 no. Before that. And then they, they decided that it was bad for you, that it was killing mice or something. And in recent years, they found out it wasn't killing mice. But it tasted just like sugar. And it was great. You know, you could have your Diet Coca-Cola and it tasted just like the real thing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden, uh, this stuff is bad for you. And it's, uh, I can't remember what they called the stuff. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name. And uh, the, the, eventually they said, well, we're going to ban it. We're not going to let people use it. In recent years, they found out there was nothing wrong with it. But they did then. And so they replaced it with uh, the stuff, the Spartamine or whatever that's called. And that was okay. You know, Diet Coke was okay. But now they've come out with Diet, uh, they've come out with Coke Zero, and then they came out with Z Coke Zero Sugar, which doesn't mean it has sugar. It means it has zero sugar. Mm -hmm. And that is the perfect version of Coca-Cola for non, you know, for non -caloric. Yeah, that's the one I'm drinking now. It is. Isn't it good? Oh, yeah. You know. It's just really good. It's, I, in fact, I don't like regular Coca-Cola anymore. And I, I don't know if there's a real market for regular Coca-Cola anymore. Well, from what I read, millennials do not drink Coke. So. What do they drink? Uh, energy drinks. Energy drinks, those things? Yeah. Well, that's going to set your head a throbbing. 
Yeah. You know, uh, energy drinks. Wow. Yeah, because uh, Red Bull, things like that. Yeah, and Red Bull causes, I think, kidney stones. Well, you know what? I'll tell you, when I was working in the uh, 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 electronics industry or the computer industry, do you know what computer programmers did like crazy? Was Mountain Dew. Because it... It had the most caffeine. It had huge amount of caffeine. And they would spend all nights coding, drinking one can of, of Mountain Dew after another. And uh, so it became... The whole computer industry was founded on Mountain Dew. I'm, I'm serious. Um, it was, the, it was the, the computer coder's dream drink. Do you ever remember this thing? Remember when Dana Carvey had a TV show? Which, by uh, the way, lip, but, by uh, the way, very good show. Yeah. In, in fact, if you go to, I think it's Hulu, they have them up on Hulu, and and it really was very good. Yeah. Uh, and he had writers like Judd Apatow was involved with them, and who are some of the other Louis, writers? Louis C.K., Colbert, uh, Steve mm-hmm. Carell. Colbert was one of the one of the performers. So was Carell. Yeah. In fact, they did this thing on that show about two waiters who couldn't stand the thought of food, and they're trying to recite the food that's available for dinner that night to a couple who are having dinner, and they start vomiting. (laughs) They start (laughs) kind of... And then we have a wonderful flank steak. (laughs) It was a very, very funny routine. It's on there, folks, if you get a chance. Well, I think the the show is probably too edgy because Dana has such a wholesome... um, well, that's what they figured. They figured they were getting Saturday Night Live Dana. Yeah. And Dana went out and found all these guys like Louis C.K. and uh, 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 Colbert, uh, who was a real wild and man. Pr- at the and time. probably Smigel. And Smigel, I think, was involved with it. Yes, absolutely. And uh, they did this show that was that broke every rule. Um. And every week they would have brought to you by, or they would name the show like the Dana Carvey Mountain Dew show, okay? And they would literally sell the name to somebody, and then in the show Dana would do kind of a a commercial for it. And I remember when it was the Dana Carvey Mountain Dew show, he uh, he, he has somebody sitting there, I don't know, it might have been a Corell, it might have been whoever, Colbert, and he says, uh, look at this. And he takes Mountain Dew and he pours it into a glass. He says, what does that look like to you? And the <laughs> other guy goes, refreshment? <laughs> and Dana goes, no, what does it really look like to you? He said, wholesomeness in a glass? He said, no, what is it really? They never say what, it, what he's trying uh-huh. to get the answer of. But, you know, basically he's saying, doesn't it look like piss? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I think after that, Mountain Dew said, I don't want anything to do with this. So next week it was the next week it was another sponsor. And eventually they were having a hard time finding somebody to get a free advertising to be the sponsor of the show. Um, <laughs> show only lasted, what, how many episodes? Six, Six 12? Eight, yeah. yeah. And then that was it. And, but it was, it was a brilliant show. And um, um, I don't know that Dana actually, I, I think I said they had a documentary about it on Hulu, about the Dana Carvey show. And it was, um, I think he said he wasn't, you know, he really wasn't that happy when he was doing the show because it wasn't really representing him. Yeah. You know, it was just these wild men who were running rampant <laughs> on television. He was, in retrospect, he's very proud of it. You know, mm-hmm. and that they even got the goddamn thing on the air. But I think it ruined Dana's career, you know, at the time. So it didn't help at the time. But yeah, he's, exactly. He's back, exactly. So. You know, there's a very good documentary on um, Judd Apatow did a four hour documentary on HBO. I was going to tell you, I'm three hours into it. I love it. On Gary Shandling. Isn't yeah. that maybe the best documentary you've ever seen about comedy? Yeah, I, when I first heard it, I said, I can't watch four and a half hours. Now I, can't I was the same way. The I said to the girlfriend, you go watch it. And then we started it, and I, it, one thing led to another. Before we knew it, we watched all two nights of it. 
and all four hours of it, and it's it's sensational. Yeah. I mean, what was your takeaway from it? Well, it, it, it's just great. He was uh, certainly one of my comic uh, icons. He, he was a comic I actually wanted to be, I think. And so I, I didn't realize his life was uh, losing the brother. seemed like that really, really affected him. Yes, it did. Well, I don't think we're spoiling anything for you folks because it happens in the first act of the show, you know. Happens in the first act, and you can see how it... Uh, well, the, I don't think the mother did a great job of handling that. <laughs> it's called they, the Zen. They of, kind of it, did. They kind of didn't tell him the brother died, yeah, right? It, it, it's called the Zen of Gary Shandling, and it, part of that is because he kept writing these almost Zen-like notes to himself. You know, life is this, death is that, uh, and so on. And uh, it is. It's. I came to appreciate him more than I did when he was alive. I mean, I liked him on It's Gary Shandling's show, which I thought was brilliant, and I loved him on uh, uh, Larry Sanders. Larry Sanders is the best. I never paid a lot of attention to his stand-up or his time on The Tonight Show, Uh, but I realized he he was good at what he did, but I didn't realize that his effect was as profound on other people, that he, in fact, was was what we call mentoring people, Right. In everything from um, comedy to movies to directing movies, serious films. He, you know, he became uh, 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 a consultant on some films. Uh, that he really, his, his, the love that people felt for him in, that, in the business was extraordinary. Because they felt they had been really influenced by him. Um, so I mean, I, I you must have loved watching it because probably it, it it said a lot of things to you about your own career. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it just I can't believe it's four and a half hours, and you want to see more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you get to but see. It's great they saved all those notes and everything that he wrote. Well, you also get to see his comedy in total, and it is some pretty amazing shit. You know, mm-hmm. um, I mean, he was amazing. Uh, what a what a what a what a great comic! So everybody, you should watch that. Now, the one I want to watch, I haven't watched it yet, is the Andre the Giant documentary on HBO, uh, in which they have a documentary about. You remember Andre the Giant? Yeah, what uh, <laughs> they made a documentary about? It. <laughs> well, he was the he was the first wrestler, or one of the first wrestlers to take on a persona. You know, and uh, he, he was very well liked and very well loved. He wound up in the Princess Bride. You know, he was one of the stars of the Princess Bride, and it I, I think it could be a very interesting documentary. Although, as I remember, the earliest incarnation of a character in wrestling was Gorgeous George. I've heard of him. Yes. Uh, came out wearing a feather boa and things like that, you know. And, but well, he, wrestling was one of the first popular shows in television, right? Well, you know why? Because it was cheap. It was you didn't cheap have to pay. It was like, it, wrestling, it's kind of genius because it's, rest, it's actually more of a soap opera than wrestling. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, it never was taken seriously as a sport. I mean, there is college wrestling, and that's a serious sport. But this, if you did college wrestling on television, everybody would fall asleep. Yeah. Because it's very slow and it's muscle against muscle and so on. Uh, this was um, a sports entertainment, they referred to it as. Yeah. <laughs> they came up with these outrageous characters. Like, <laughs> remember there was some guy called the Sheik? They had the Sheik. My favorite uh, was, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, God. Oh, uh, George the something. Oh, oh God. Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. I should know him because he was my favorite wrestler. And he was this guy who was just, he was ugly as sin, and he would come out, and he was just this absolute brute. And um, he was a college professor. (laughs) <laughs> he was. <laughs> was it George the something something? George the Beast? The, you, I, can't, I can't remember. God damn it. 
I hate this. I hate when this happens to me. And now I know that when we're running this, there's a uh, a crawl of, of people chatting. We're now going to suddenly say, going to give out the name. You know? Right. Um, George the Animal Steel. That was his name. George the Animal Steel. He and, I haven't heard of. And he was, I think it was George the Animal Steel. Let me, let me look it up. Got to look it up. Wait a minute. Let me type in the wonderful words. George the Animal Steel. Let me go the Animal Steel. Then I'll find out what his first name was. Steel. Okay, then you guys don't have to. The animal, George the Animal Steel. Yeah, that was his name. Oh, here's his net worth. Uh, well, how much was he worth? Uh, well, it doesn't say. But anyway, he was, uh, he was um, um, a, a very funny... Uh, in fact, he was in... You remember the movie uh, Ed Wood? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he played Tor Johnson in that picture. George oh, okay. Animal Steel. And uh, supposedly, this guy was a college professor. And he was looking for a way to supplement his income, and he went into wrestling. And he played this character who would go out and eat, like start eating the turnbuckle on the <laughs> in the <laughs> ring. The animal. Yeah, George Animal Steel. How could I not remember George the Animal Steel? But anyway, I thought he was just terrific. I mean, I just loved him. Uh, and because uh, I was, I followed wrestling for a short time there. With they had the the Iron Sheik, and you had uh, Roddy Rowdy Piper, Rowdy Roddy Piper, uh, who, by the way, was one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen. Because as a gymnast, I mean, he did flips and flops and everything like that. But he came out in the ring wearing a kilt. You know. Yeah, a lot of those guys did get hurt. Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't that you didn't get hurt. Although it was hard, to, it looked like you were getting more hurt than you were. But if you ever watch wrestling, it's more like you're fighting on a trampoline. That the yeah. it's the the stage, the ring is very loosely sprung. So when they take somebody and they shove them down, they really just it's like landing on on pillows or whatever. It's it. it but sometimes you know there were accidents. It, now here's something they used to do. And they stopped doing it. But you ever notice in the early days of wrestling, the, the uh, wrestlers, would their, their head would get bloody and there'd be blood come, spurting coming down from their head? Uh-huh. Do, do you remember those days? Yeah, yeah. You know how they did that? Uh, they had, probably a ketchup pack? No, they had a little razor blade. Oh, Jesus. In their hand, in their fingers, taped to their fingers. Oh and they would cut themselves while they were wrestling. So the blood would start coming out. So Ugh. if you ever go and see an old wrestler like maybe George the Animal Steel or the Iron Sheik, you will see all these little cut marks on their forehead from that. Jesus. Now that's dedication to your craft. <laughs> and, of course, uh, one of the biggest movie stars, money-wise, would probably be Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, yeah. He, I think he is the biggest movie star, isn't he, right now? I think He's so. pretty much. And he, you know what? He's very likable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he's not a star because of his muscles or anything else. He's just got star quality. You know. I think I think you said he looked like Rob Schneider on steroids. Uh, I no, I didn't say that, but Rob Schneider Schneider probably did. Uh, <laughs> he uh, no, he um, has, has the. Biggest film in like 15 or 20 years for Sony Pictures. Jumanji. Was, mm -hmm. It's their biggest grossing picture of the last like 15, 20 years. He is the most bankable actor in movies today. You put him in it, anything and it will, it will sell tickets. And I like him. You know, it's not like I have anything bad to say about him. I think he's, I think he's good at what he does. He's good for the type. He's a true movie star. In that his persona is what is the star, not uh, not the person, you know, and uh, so it's kind of like uh, kind of like Bogart. Every time we went to a Bogart movie, you went to see Bogart. You didn't go to see Bogart playing somebody, you know. That's why you know. So it's you know, I um, um, I, I really like uh, um, him. So he's done very well, and now uh, there are a couple of other people coming out of wrestling trying to emulate the same thing but he was the only one that really um really has made it big 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 
And, and I don't know if he still does, but for a while he had to give a lot of his money back every time he made money. Part of the, his fee went to uh, the WWE. Oh, that Don uh, McMahon. Uh, yeah, McMahon. Now, I don't know if he has to do that anymore, but for a while, in order to do all these other things, he had to give him a cut of the action. So, you know. But anyway, oh. hey, look, we've we've run out of time. We started talking about right. wrestlers, and before you know it, we've uh, completely wasted another 25 minutes of our <laughs> life. Well, let's talk about Gary Shandling some more the next time. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely, the attractive, and the uh, somewhat verbose and, um, well, whatever he is, it's it's what you describe and other people do, too, as Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. All righty. Well, there he was. Bubbles, ladies and gentlemen. Bubble. Larry Bubbles Brown. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Alex Bennett. And uh, uh, let me turn up my my mic's uh, not up high enough. Hold on a second. Let me do this. i got to get them adjusted. I come in here. I come in here on a Monday, and I don't check everything like I should. Uh, if you notice a little bit, I, I don't know if you notice the difference. There is a, a better camera tonight. Uh, we are a lot clearer, I think, uh, thanks to the fact that I went out and bought a 4K webcam. Uh, not that you're seeing it in 4K, but that it has the ability for that resolution, so therefore all lesser resolutions look much better anyway. So uh, do I look better? No, you still look as ugly as you always were. Thank you very much. Well, let me see here. Let me get up my, uh, my Skype. Uh, I even put a new logo up there on the Skype line here. Okay, so we're open for business here. If anybody wants to call us, uh, we have our lines are open. By the way, tomorrow night, part two of our interview with Jack Garfine, uh, the Broadway director, motion picture director, uh, uh, teacher, scholar, uh, everything, who spent... Uh, first part of his life in concentration camps, 11 of them. And uh, we're going to continue our interview with him, another 30 minutes worth, and then we will, the finale will be the week afterwards, which will be a long 50-minute episode. And um, after that, we're going to put all hour and 50 minutes up as one video so that if you want to tell people about it, to watch it and whatever, uh, they'll be able to. But that's tomorrow night will be part two of our three-part interview with Jack Garfine. And I, I think you'll, you'll, uh, uh, people the last week were just gobsmacked by it. So uh, I think there's no reason why you shouldn't be too. Okay, this is the part where I wait for people to call. And then at some point I threaten that if I don't hear from anybody in five minutes, I'm just going to turn the whole damn thing off. Uh, and I, come on, I, you got to call me because I got a brand new camera. Look here, look at look at the. You can actually see the writing on my hat, you know, and what it says, and uh, it's so much clearer and cleaner. Is anybody noticing that at all? Let's see here. Hi, Alex. Um, George. Somebody wrote for George the Animal Steel, right? But nobody notices the good, good look, the better quality camera that we're using tonight. So, uh, to hell with all of you. All right. Okay. Anyway, I'm waiting for the first caller. It's got to be. It's going to be Phil. I'm sure. Maybe it won't be. I don't know. But we're open. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, let me see here. Anything I have to say? Uh, Today was tax day, and uh, at the uh, IRS, they had trouble with their website, so nobody could file their taxes. So they're giving it one more day. They, if this was actually an extra day today um, because they, uh, they, they, I don't know why they made it an extra day, but somehow Monday, which was supposed to be the first day, was a holiday of some sort. Not that I, that I really know. Uh, do you notice my camera looks better? Yeah, but uh, the video looks really dark. Well, that's not me. No? No, that's you. That's something with you. Huh. Because uh, my video, look at me, folks. I look great. There's no dark video there. It's all 
it's all beautiful and bright on my side. And when I look at it on the uh, on the on the on the web itself, uh, you know, it looks fine too. So it, it's you as usual, Phil. As usual. As usual. Hello, Scott Boddicker. How are you? Hey, man. There he is. Hi, Scott. Hey, Alex. Yeah. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let me ask yeah. Phil. What was looking dark? The picture you're seeing of me? Oh, yeah, it is yeah. dark. Yeah, let me let me do something about that. That That is not the one that goes out over the air, so I hardly ever pay attention to that. Uh, well, I was going to say, the one that's going out on YouTube, hold it's on, amazing. Man. Really? Oh, it's, I was reading the titles on your bookshelf behind you. Y really? Okay, and it's working. That's working. Okay, let me do this. But this looks horrible. Yeah. There, that's there you go. Okay. No, that's too much. Yeah, it's a little too much. Yeah, it's a little too much. Let me... Uh, let me, I've got to go here, and uh, let me, let me see here, right light, no, we have to, we have to, there's something wrong with the white balance, oh, here we go, auto white yeah. balance, there we go, yeah, but it. now I'm too blue, that's, <laughs> maybe, are you wearing blue, huh, are you wearing blue, I'm wearing blue, but my face looks blue, oh, well, I mean, that's the, Nobody sees this on the air. This is the this is the feed that goes out on Skype that you that you see. Hold on a sec. Maybe I can uh, adjust this. There we go. There, that, that's that's slightly better. I'll fix it when I'm uh, on another day and time here. Uh, so yeah, that looks okay. Does it look right? Uh, that that'll you you can live with that, right, guys? Yeah, yeah that's a good. That's good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was going to go back to your YouTube. It's much better on YouTube. Yeah. Well, no, the, the picture that I use on YouTube is from a different camera altogether. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. And then yeah, yeah. what goes out on Skype, because uh, you can't get two cameras working at the same time, one camera working on both things at the same time. Uh, the system just won't allow you to do it. So I've always had two cameras, one for you guys to see me, uh, and then one that goes out. And the one that's going out now I think, did you say it looks gorgeous? You can read all the books in back of me and everything. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back and look at it again. Oh, now you're... There we go. Okay. All right, now that we're all adjusted, thanks for calling, and I'll see you next week. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Actually, <laughs> I, you won't see me tomorrow. Why is that? Uh, tomorrow's a photography club, and uh, Thursday I'm shooting a Brazilian band at the UC Theater. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll live without you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, safe zone. Huh? <laughs> no Republican zone. <laughs> well, if nobody calls, then I'll just, I'll just hang up, you know. I, I call this thing off early. We have very light listenership tonight for some strange <laughs> reason. I enjoyed listening to your conversation with Bubbles. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, about I, Gary Shandling and... Uh, yeah. Well, I always have pro uh, fun with Bubbles because Bubbles and I just talk about stuff. So it, it's just, you know, me and uh, and Bubbles in a, in a conversation. And we take it whichever way it goes. He's kind of like a co-host for a half hour, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he works out really great. Uh, and tomorrow night, I guess you're going to miss part two of uh, of uh, Jack Garfine's interview. I'll hear the uh, recorded version. Well, yeah, boy, did we get a lot of lot of reaction to last week's. So you know, and I'm telling you, when we get to when we get to the third episode of the of these interviews, that's really something. What do you know? John Perulis is not all in a black background. But I will be pretty soon. I got to do go to my editing room. Hey. I, my wife and I bought tickets for Ray Renati's play on oh, Thursday. Oh, really? Yeah, I got a thing yeah. about it. and uh, uh, There's no way I can fly out, Ray, so I'm sorry. But I'll give you the lowdown. I'll give you the whole thing. I promise I won't try to live stream it on my iPhone. When so. are you going to When are you going to go see it? Thursday night. Oh, Thursday night. So I won't have you on the show, and I won't have right. uh, uh, Phil either. But you'll yeah. call, won't you, Scott? Please. No. No, 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 no. Oh, you mean. You're mean. No. You're just really mean. I don't say much anyway, so I'll just. I should get my money's worth out of this camera and every now and then come back to me. But it does. It does. I was looking at it. It does look a great deal better, you know. What, what kind of camera do you have? 
it's a Brio. It's a it's a Logitech, but it's a, it's a uh, about a hundred yeah. and they sell them now for about one hundred and sixty bucks, and they're four K. They're capable of four K. Oh wow, four K. Yeah. yeah, but you're not watching it in four K. You're watching it in seven twenty p. I think is is what Facebook uh, puts out. Yeah, but it's right. a it's a much more even picture all the way around. Uh, and yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah, great. Yeah, I got a new toy too. What'd you get? Oh, you want to see it? I'll I'll show it to you. You don't don't have to show me it. (laughs) Yeah, I got I I bought a I bought a a mini Mac from uh, from I get I get Phil's hand me downs now, Uh, (laughs) and and that mini Mac is terrific. It could it could replace my Pro. What's that? Live View? What's that? Yeah. It's it's a hardware encoder. Oh no, you uh, told me about that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is fantastic. I I gave it a workout uh, yesterday uh, in downtown San Francisco, live streaming a news event, mm-hmm. and it was just awesome. I mean, it gave me consistent 720p mm-hmm. uh, over um, a Verizon hotspot. You know, well, right in front of well, the. Well, now the people that I've been doing business with for years, which is live stream, have a thing you can buy and put on top of a camera and broadcast live using it. Yeah. So you know what is cool about this one is right here. I don't know if you could see it. Uh, there's one on this side and one on this side. Oh, HDMI out. USB uh, connections so that you could bond uh, two or more, even up to four or five cellular devices on this thing, and you get rock solid bonded uh, internet yeah. connection yeah. so i got a job next week i'm gonna give that a whirl yeah well have fun with it you know. yeah yeah i downloaded obs studio and oh, good I got, I got the camera to work uh i didn't find under filters the chroma cast oh the chroma key key yeah well, just go to, their, go, go to their tutorial and look up chroma key <laughs> i did i watched several tutorials but uh, I'll get it. Just don't go to Chroma. You don't need Chroma key. If I don't need it, you don't need it. Okay. I don't need a lot of things. I didn't need that Mac Mini, but you seem to <laughs> need it. No, you. Oh, you Chroma key is fun. Huh? You can yeah. do all kinds of neat things. Yeah, with but it. it's you know, I mean, come on. It it, it 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 he has no use for it. Okay, except as a gimmick. Yeah. And then he's going to play with it, and then we're going to have to watch all these things of like his head in a toilet bowl and shit like that. And I don't, you know, you know, I, I mean, I hadn't thought about the toilet. Well, bowl. maybe it's because I've I've had it with chroma key. I spent a lot of time in front of chroma key screens in my lifetime. You know. Well, I saw you last time I saw you live, Alex was at, at um, a streaming media show in San Jose, and uh, you were doing Chrome Key right there oh, with yeah. those weird ring light. Yeah, we, it was called. That was called. Uh, b- 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 what do we call the thing? Uh, light. Uh, no, well, no. It 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 was. You literally had a reflective screen in back yeah. of me, and then the ring. It was uh, called a, a hollow ring. We called it. You put the hollow ring in front of the camera where the yeah. lens is. So that, that you don't see anything, but surrounding the lens, it shoots the color onto the reflective screen and then back into the camera, and then you use that as your chroma key. Yeah. So you yeah, can use great. anything. You could use yeah. red. You could use blue. You could, you know, we had several colors for them. Uh, I I uh, met. Uh, In case people Lieutenant don't know, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're, wait a minute. We're talking about something. I better explain it to the audience because uh, right. it's boring as shit to them. Uh, and they should know chroma key is, is the way in which you literally take somebody and what you do is you cut out the background and place a background in there. They do it in movies all the time. That's why things look so huge and big when there's just like two people just standing there. Uh, and, and what it does is it eliminates everything but what's the color of that screen and then it superimposes a picture on it. That's the simplest way to explain it. Okay. <laughs> screen. <laughs> Chroma key screen, huh? Yeah. 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 You're not supposed to wear anything green if you so like if my hat was green, my head would be cut Well, off, we we know? used to use Chroma key be invisible. Well, we used to use Chroma key blue, but That's the, right. but everybody mm-hmm. went to green because less people if you were doing interviews, less people would show up with green problems. Uh, okay. Do you remember that TV show yeah. The uh, Invisible Man? Yeah. Uh, did they use Chroma key for that? Which one? 
Uh, I don't read the know. Claude Rains the, one. The, the Claude uh, Rains uh, one they used a form of it. It was actually Luma Key. Yeah, Luma Key. Luma Key. Oh, because they only did black and white then, right? That's right. So, it was Luma Key. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, the Chroma Key. Um, you know, they they use on most things. I mean, it's it's a simple technique now. It, it when I did my TV show before we came to this and just doing audio and now back again doing video. Um, uh, we, the whole set I use, and people can go on to, uh, go on to our, our Roku, uh, uh, our Roku uh, channel and see the shows we did with it. It's, it's a virtual set and you couldn't tell that it was a virtual set. It looked like it's I crazy. was I thought it was a real set. You thought yeah. it was a real yeah. set. Yeah. Set four uh, locally here has the exact same set. I think it's real. <laughs> but, uh, well, the same exact it's set. It's it's probably from uh, from my friends at New Tech. They, they that's their what comes what comes with the, the uh, 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 TriCaster, whatever it was called. Uh, and it, it really yeah, they still make that. Yeah, it was still. Uh, I know it's a, gr a great company and they do great work. Uh, mm. And but the whole set was completely. And I had two sets actually. I had a set I then went to and sat on sat on a stool. Uh, with a big screen to the side of me, and so uh, you know, it was uh, it, we did some good stuff with that chroma key, you know. But I spent enough time with chroma key that I don't need it now. Okay, well, and you you can look at mine when I get it going. No, I don't want to see yours. The minute yours goes on, I'm hanging up on you. Oh, sure. It's the same <laughs> thing as same things as with your sound effects. I'm hanging. I hang up on you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to do that max headroom key, you know, like have all the weird things going on in the back of me. And I miss max headroom. I wish they'd Jeez, put it on again, update it. I hope not. <laughs> no, I hope not, because anytime they redo something, it's never as good as the original, because the original was based yeah. on a certain simplicity that the new ones, they try to use all the tricks of the trade in order to make it yeah. work. Uh, well, they uh, blew it on the prisoner. You remember Patrick McGowan's prisoner? They did a, re a remake of that a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm trying to remember with who. It sucked. It was so bad. You're breaking up a little bit yeah. on us. I don't know yeah. what's wrong with your uh, with your bandwidth. With your, your bandwidth is a little fucked, but oh, that's okay. Nice system. No, you're mm -hmm. fine. You're great. Yeah, no, fine, Scott. I, I heard breaking up, and I, I, I I've, 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 just in, I, I've just been I've just been ingesting Netflix uh, redo of Lost in Space. It's great, isn't it? Oh, yes. you guys like that? Yes and no. I'm, I, I thought it sucked. It's so slow moving. Well, I, that's it moves like part, part of the problem is it it's very slow moving. Right. Uh, to the point that's at the which, is, uh, to the point of which that in some episodes I'm going, come on already, come on already, come on, come on. Exactly. I only watched the first one. Oh, you only watched the first one. Uh, it, 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 there's that problem. There's another problem in that uh, all of a sudden people are coming out from everywhere and they never <laughs> explain how, no, no big deal. It's early on, Scott, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Take no. What I'm what I was going to say is it's so early on. I'm not spoiling the plot for you. Now, okay. is it still Will Robinson or <laughs> yes. uh, somebody else? It's Will Robinson, and there's a robot. And yeah, but they made the robot this spooky, icky thing. It's not. I miss Robbie the robot. You know, no, I, mean, I don't what, miss what Robbie. Robbie the robot came from Forbidden Planet. They didn't even invent him for that. Was a rent a robot that the production he company was, got. I saw him at uh, Kennedy Space Center a yeah, few years uh, ago. But no, I, I, I do like what they've done with the robot in this one. I think that uh, um, he he has a certain kind of evil, menacing look, but then he yeah. had, then he, the, the actor who's playing him inside is playing with a lot of, uh, enough humanity in him that it, it, it kind of it works. That's the part of the show that works. But How about the, the doctor? What's his name? Well, yeah, but that's oh, it's part of the guy now, now and now uses, this time uh, this time it's water. this time it's Parker Posey. Uh, Parker Posey. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, it's a woman. And it's and and I gotta say that I'm up to the fifth episode, and they don't do a hell of a lot with her. She just does stuff, and then you don't understand what she's doing. And it it's <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. It's not. I'm not gonna say anything that's gonna ruin it for you. In fact, let me say that this whole show is virtually. Um, uh, Where's my mute uh, button? No, is virtually. Uh, uh, Where's my sound off button? Uh, it, 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 what, what do they call it when you when you let out out? Uh, you know, spoiler. Spoiler. It's spoiler proof. The show. <laughs> That's because it moves like molasses. Mol it moves like molasses, <laughs> and there are no great surprises. Yet there's something about it I do like, and, and I can't. I think. Number one, I think the father is badly cast. Um, the kids are fine, um, but of course you got a white family with one black kid. I'm trying to figure that one and, out. Well, but they I, I they go there. they explain it in the fifth episode, and it's just kind of like a throw off, you know, yeah. uh, to explain. Hey, the black but, kid does not yeah. wear a hoodie. No, Phil. but here's what they should so, do. Well, here's know, what they like that. That. here's what they should do. In England, if you had a black kid in a white family, they wouldn't even let. He's just a black actor playing that part, you oh, know, yeah. and they don't make a big deal out of it. But here they felt somewhere they had to explain how they had this black kid. You know, you can't be smart enough to figure all oh, the probably it's, you know, a blended family, you know. Hey, you know, well, one great. Hmm? One great thing about that show that I got to give it a hundred percent is the special effects. I mean, they're incredible. Well, they're very really. nice. They're very nicely done. Yeah. Although far more trans, far more. You, you look at them, you say special effect. You say drawing, artwork. You know, well, that was the whole it, idea of the original one. It was so campy that. Uh, well, yeah. But you see, they, they couldn't be anything else but campy because they were dealing with yeah. a technology that was imperfect. Okay. Yeah. And, and so consequently, um, uh, they had to do that. Uh, and so we like it for that campiness because they, they may do with what they had. Hey, you know, Zorro was in it. You know, Zorro was my hero. Guy Williams, you know? so yeah. That's what uh, got me into Lost in Space. But, uh, you know, and, and uh, they they had Billy Mummy in the first episode yeah. of this one. Billy Mummy. Did you notice him, Scott? <laughs> Bill, Bill Mummy. No. Oh, was he the was he the doctor? He no. yeah, he was the doctor who uh, she steals the coat she from. Steals the stuff. jacket yeah. from. Yeah, that's okay. Bill Mummy. That's only that's the only other Mummy. guy that you know made any sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any original characters in there? Any from original the show? Oh, yeah. there are fifty of them now. That's the trouble with it. In the old oh, one, they were oh. lost in space, and they yeah. were on this planet all alone, and mm -hmm. occasionally somebody would land on it and make their life a living hell, or there'd be some kind of adventure that they would have or whatever. But on this planet, there are people who, a whole bunch of people who landed there. So how are you lost in space? No, you're dislocated in space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they moved. Yeah. Due uh, to uh, some sort of... I don't know, asteroid coming at the Earth or something? I don't know. No, they were coming because Earth was just get going sour. And they were all going to okay. go to Alpha Centauri. And then the place they were on that was they were going to jump off from to go to Alpha Centauri got attacked by this robot, right? The same robot? The, same, the same, same robot. robot. Like it's the same robot, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I couldn't figure out. It's like... What is wrong with that dude? Well, well he then gets, uh, he, he, he gets, uh, how can I put it, a case of Alzheimer's and okay. becomes a good robot. Yeah. But I, I got to go dark now. I'll, I'll be right. I'll be here. Okay. You're always dark. Yeah. <laughs> we could use, we could I use see. some more callers. We're, we're, we've been getting light on callers lately. This is, I don't know what this is all. Uh, yeah, there for a while you were getting so many people. I didn't even bother calling in cause it was, it was packed and what's the point? Yeah. 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 I thought it was because it was too many Jews on the oh, show. Look at that beautiful world out there. Oh. What, what, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> I, I watched the, uh, four or five, uh, Roseanne's. Uh, so I I'm watched one tonight before I came on here. Um, is, is there a new one or? Uh, yeah, this yeah, there's one on tonight. There's one uh, on tonight. I'll have to watch it on Hulu, so I'll, I guess I'll get. Uh, see, I'll tell you. I mean, it's not a it's not a badly written show. It's not horrible, it, but you I know, just, yeah, it's it, it, it. You know, I. Uh, it's not like I 
going to make an appointment to watch the damn thing. But it, I, I, it's there's nothing wrong with it, really. You know, it's the Roseanne show. Yeah, it was uh, it twenty was, years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids come back. It's uh, you know, it's it's well, well they're it calling it real. They're calling it season eleven. Yeah, yeah. So uh-huh. yeah, numerically, so um, and and it, it uh, I think. You know, I can't. It's not a bad show. Tonight, Johnny Galecki was on it, playing the role he played on there. And who, yeah, who? How can took, he do two shows? Is it is that okay? I mean, no, uh, he just he, he just gets permission, and I'm sure CBS and I'm uh, Chuck Lorre are very happy to let him do it. You know, because it's it's where he started, and okay. uh, I'm sure it's with their blessing. You know, oh, he wouldn't. Yeah. He's not, listen, he's not going. He's not going to fuck up a thousand a million dollar a week job. No. No, not, not to go to Roseanne. Yeah. Not to go to Roseanne. I mean, each one of the four principals in that show, three principals on the show, on um, Big Bang. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Penny, Sheldon, and, Lucky and, and Galecki's yeah. character. Uh, they get a million bucks apiece per episode. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Chump change. Yeah. So, you know, he, but he started out on this show. This was one of his first sure. shows. And so to have him come back was, it, it's kind of like a, 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 what can we call it, a, um, oh, I don't know, a tri- triumphant tour or something, uh, whatever you want to call it. What back. did he yeah. play on Roseanne? What? Originally. What character did he, he play? He played, uh, what's her name's uh, boyfriend, who she marries, I think, or, yeah, or boy, Sarah boyfriend. Gilbert, whatever well, her name yeah. was, uh, yeah, I think it's so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, and they, they were married and divorced, or not divorced, but separate. I don't know. It's just yeah. Well, I guess in the new one, uh, the guy dies, right? No, no, his not... brother died. Oh, I thought it was uh, uh, the whose brother dies. Husband. See, died. I mean, I didn't believe it or not. I only yeah. followed the original Roseanne up to a point. The the blonde's husband is dead. Right. He's really dead. the The actor really died. That's why he couldn't come back. Oh. oh, I see. That's what my wife thinks anyway, yeah. Well, I mean, if he and died... They had a little memorial to, uh, you know, in memory of blah, blah, blah. Well, well they whatever. had two Beckys, right? There were two Beckys on the show? Yes. And this is the second Becky, Becky? The original Becky, but the second Becky they had on the first episode. The first two, she, yeah. Yeah, she was the woman who wanted to have a baby by somebody else by the second. original Becky the original yeah. Becky yeah whoever I don't know I don't, I don't follow these things <laughs> that closely they changed Becky's on me in the in the four or five shows I watched well then Becky the got, second Becky's much better looking well and if yeah. I remember correctly Be- Becky got married I yeah she married she married yeah. uh Johnny Galecki's brother on the show yeah it's like it's okay. like the, the two brothers now, do you know do you know sister. do you know what actor married them no he had his back to the camera the entire time. David Feldman. Comedian really? David Feldman. Yeah, my friend David. He said, I finally got a part on Roseanne because he was, he was working the writer's room at Roseanne. And I said, oh, what part did you get? He says, my back's to the camera the entire time. I marry <laughs> Becky. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's see. Uh you know, I, I haven't watched Hulu in a long time, but all of a sudden I discovered a couple of good things. There was a thing on sharks. Uh, <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, it's called Shark Tank. It's like he's four people. Well, and they... This was not a Shark Tank. It was like a documentary. Uh, and, and it was uh, all about sharks and different sharks, tiger sharks. What I'm going to be doing next year. Makes right. you want to go scuba diving. Yeah. I'm going to be diving with tiger sharks in March of 2019. Really? Wow. Not in the cage. Just right out there with them. And 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 if they uh, if they mop you up, do we call that a fill free forever? Yeah, probably. Uh, there's only six six uh, people participating, in the, and then they have a big crew that watches your back uh, to to make sure they don't attack from the back. Oh, that's really good. Have did, fun, Phil. Do yeah. they give you bang sticks? Uh, no, I'll have my camera. Uh, you know, my I have a big camera with an enclosure and arms and strobes. Is it so big you, enough to eat in one gulp? Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> no, although a uh, funny thing is my friend Jason did this last year. Yeah. And uh, a 17-foot tiger named Emma, that is a regular one there, mm. actually took his camera enclosure and he got video inside of Emma's mouth. She went about 30 feet and then dropped it. And uh, so he's got the video uh, from uh, inside the tiger's mouth. Tiger. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, have fun on that one. Oh, man. Mm. I, I sent you a, uh, a, uh, a video of uh, t- uh, Tiger Beach from this the company that I'm going with. Uh, they do this every week. And uh, so somebody just put together a pretty good video, high def. Uh, and so I sent it to you via messenger. Oh, okay. It's about a minute and a half. Yeah, but is, that must be one of the many videos you've so seen. So what, what, kind of, what kind of camera are you going to use, Phil? Well, I have uh, a, uh, for underwater, because I have an older uh, housing, and the housings are specific to the camera. I'm using a Nikon D700 with mm. a 15 millimeter, uh, uh, not wide angle, uh, uh, what do you mean, 15 millimeter? Uh, Fixed lens? Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a fixed lens, but real wide. And uh, it's a Subal housing with a couple of CNC strobes. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. the sharks will love the flash. Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody else was using the flash. I was, I was studying the videos mm-hmm. to see what people were doing, how they were doing it, the angles that they were taking the photos. Uh, a lot of guys used, um, a vid- uh, used video, but the D700 is strictly still. And uh, but it's it's a uh, full frame. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, and I'm not spending another ten grand on underwater video uh, underwater equipment. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, yeah. No, don't, don't. I mean, the, the camera I had before. Uh, in my case, underwater. I would just get one of those cameras. Kodak made the made that you could shoot underwater with. You know, those disposables. Whatever happened to the disposable cameras? Those disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> those don't exist anymore. I use GoPros when they uh, do. Yeah, that. GoPros, right? Yeah. Well, you can't you can't get better video than GoPros. Well, I I, mean, I really... have a mount on my uh, thing to mount a GoPro, and I'm going to mount the GoPro uh, on my housing. Well, don't and... get sexual with it, Phil. <laughs> I uh, well, I, I won't be able to do that for a while either. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I got to tell you, that, you know, I, I take uh, occasionally I'll take video with the GoPro and with the uh, the thing I've got that's the uh, the uh, Steadicam. Steadicam. And it's, I mean, the quality is just yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. It is just yeah. extraordinary. Um, yeah. And I'm not even shooting in 4K. I'm talking about it's just extraordinary, just in 1080p. Um, yeah. Uh, but I got to tell you that I also did a whole video with my uh, iPhone. And they're great for shooting mm-hmm. with. The only the only problem with uh, with uh, the uh, uh, a GoPro is that you don't have you you don't have a zoom at all that you can use. There is kind of a zoom you can use on an iPhone if you want to, um, but it's not. It's an opt. It's a electronic zoom. It's not an optical zoom. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I wish it'd be really nice if the GoPro had more. Uh, but what the hell, you know, I mean, I, it does what it's got to do and it does it beautifully. Well, you know, there's, there's other stuff out there now that isn't anywhere near as expensive as the Nikon and the Suval. Uh, there's the, uh, Panasonic has got a really good, uh, video G5, camera. G5, GH5. Yeah. Listen, I, I, they got I, I, for I remember I bought a few years ago, I brought and bought Marjorie when they were new, a 12, uh, P, you know, 12 megapixel, whatever. Uh, a Nikon, uh, and now the iPhone has fourteen. You right. know. Well, my my underwater camera is twelve point seven megapixel. Yeah. I I have a D eight fifty Nikon, and that's forty seven megapixel. And uh, I don't think that. You by the need way, by that. the way, folks, you know, really, we should get on to other topics because people are just scratching their heads now, going, "What are these assholes talking about?" I think you have a lot of people that are into photography to follow your no, show. No, they no, we don't. Lee yeah. Zetlin, she's into photography. Uh, yeah, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know. Hey, Alex, I, I just one more technical question. I was going to ask you: Have Have you ever thought about making a podcast 
of your show, like some of the recent things you've done, like with that this, Holocaust this is guy, a, this you is, know, just amazing. This is a it's podcast. A, this is a podcast. No, I mean, an, uh, it's a video <laughs> podcast. I mean, an audio podcast. So I, I can have go an driving. Au- yeah, go go to go go to our site, and I've got all this all the audio from these shows. Oh, good! I didn't know that. Oh, that's great. Thank you. This thing started out as an audio podcast. We just started adding video to it as kind of a. Uh, a, a perk, and now it's the only way people watch the th- da- listen to the damn thing. Hey, well, every radio station yeah. does it. K- KNBR, you know, the sports station in San Francisco, they're they're online all the time. They, They've got they, a video they, camera in there. And- they shouldn't be allowed to. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. I'm serious. No radio station should be allowed to do a podcast. Why aren't they doing a uh, 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 Periscope? And uh, you know, they'd have the Periscope. Uh, app going while they were doing their radio show is that what they're some people doing? do that yeah you yeah. know i mean it's no big deal to do any of this you know yeah. i mean it, 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 and the fact that they discovered it all of a sudden you know fuck them i don't think a radio station they've got their own method of distribution use that don't you don't have to go to the internet oh right. what nobody's listening to radio anymore not my fault <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. By the way, look at my new camera. <laughs> if anything, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's much uh, more even. It's not doesn't have a lot of contrast in it. It's just, it, but it's very nice. My screen is all fucked up. I I don't know what happened. I think it yeah. uh, ab- absorbed some uh, uh, LSD or something somewhere. Because uh, I'm moving my mouse around, and then what it does is it reveals the picture. As I move my mouse around, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. Any of you guys have that? Uh, uh, yeah, this is weird. So you uh-huh. move your mouse and it, and and you go. Yeah, I move it over Alex. Alex is like bl- total black screen for me. Yeah. And but if I move my mouse over him, uh, pixel by pixel, it like animates it back into a full screen view. That's <laughs> so damn weird. I, I don't know what. I think ever since I downloaded the new uh, Microsoft Skype, it's been acting real weird for me like that. I don't know why. Well, go go to the older Skype. Go to the Skype uh, Yeah, I classic. tried to. That, then, see, that's how I got all screwed up. I was on your show for a while, and then I couldn't get back on. And so I just uninstalled the old one. Yeah, but you go to yeah. Skype. And yeah. uh, you, um, uh, you, uh, there is a drop-down menu. When you finally get to one of the things, I, I, I don't know where it is exactly, but yeah. the, there's a place where you get a drop down menu and it says, do you want Linux? Do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want Mac OS Classic or, or yeah. Windows Classic, depending on what yeah. machine you're doing it yeah. from? Yeah. And then you just download the Classic and that gives you the, uh, the same uh, as always, not the new yeah. suck version. You think photography talk is boring. <laughs> but everybody here is using Skype in one way or another, okay? Yeah, you right. too. You know, but yeah. they don't give a shit about photographing underwater. Uh, you hey, just, you know, uh, just another techie thing. I, got I have a hard enough time this. keeping myself financially above water. I just paid a $5,000 tax bill today. Oh, yeah, I get killed too. Um Hey, yeah, where, uh, where, where I, is this? Where is this? Uh, hey, hey, Trump, where, where's your fucking... You know, it seven, huh? It would have been seven. <laughs> oh, it would have been seven. I see. Okay. I asked. No, I asked my uh, my accountant would the <clears throat> would the changes next year in the tax code uh, be helpful to me, and he said, "Not really." You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's he said the only be- people that it really has an advantage for are business people, are corporations. Yeah, uh, subchapter yeah. S pass throughs. Uh, that yeah. should help me, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, good. I'm so happy for you. Meanwhile, yeah. I had to shell out five grand. Yeah. Thanks. Well, there's more money it. out of girlfriends of, you know, uh, yeah. well, hey, home equity no loan. Fault. What? You know, your five grand's going towards my wall. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Right, <laughs> your fucking wall, man. Oh, no, jeez. What we hey, should, did you see that? Uh, what well, we should the, all they have had a si- video of some Mexican guy scaling the stupid wall in like uh, 
under a minute, you know, he, he clambered up and down, you know. The funny thing is, it was only 20 feet wide. I don't know why he went over it instead of around it. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted to prove he could do it. Ah. Ah. Uh, oh, boy. Hey, a yeah. Twitch. Twitch has the best latency of anything out there I, with that new device I was showing See, you now guys. See, now this is stuff that people don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Two I, seconds and of you know delay. Something? I don't give hey, a shit about I, la I, latency. I had to sign up for Twitch to get uh, OBS to work. I got a Twitch, but I just scratch well, it now You and can then. get OBS <laughs> to work on Facebook Live. On, you can get OBS to work on, on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't have to join Twitch. Well, it said, tw uh, you know, Twitch, so I did. Now, I didn't write down my uh, my um, access code, so uh, I may never be able to get onto it again. I mean, I do Twitch this is weird. You know, you, you know, if you ever watch Twitch and listen to By the way, folks, if you don't know what we're talking talk, about, let me like, do a narration like here to country. tell you what it's they're weird. talking about. What they're talking – oh, go ahead. <laughs> what they're talking about – is various ways that people take their video and put them out over the internet like everybody wants to do that. Yeah, no way. Yeah. Yeah, I think everybody wants to do that. Yeah. But you make it easy. Say, but you're right. going to go you're going to go use Twitch that nobody watches except gamers. <laughs> and people with Twitches. I'm telling you right now the best uh, the best system that I've I've found without question easily is is YouTube. You know, it has singularly, uh, I, I, except for one night last week where we had a problem uh, where it went down for uh, about 30 seconds or something like that, this thing has been working flawlessly. Wonderful. You know? Yeah. Yeah, don't yeah. you? you, you well, I'd rather watch you on YouTube than be on with Skype. Uh, yeah, well, a lot of people would rather do that. Yeah. That's why we only I mean, have three people here. Where is everybody else? You know, Patrick I, is getting a uh, operation. Yeah, Patrick won't be here this week. Maybe I should just take the week off. <laughs> hey, you yeah, yeah but then you won't get the lowdown about Ray Renati's play. I'll be gone Thursday. Yeah, but, but you I'll, can I'll tell me tell next you Tuesday. You can tell me next Tuesday. Oh, I could do that. Yeah. yeah. What about Friday? No, Friday. I guess I got to do a show. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If nobody, nobody calls me tomorrow night or the Thursday night. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm calling it in early. You know, every time you say that, you got seven, eight people that call, and you got a bunch of newbies. I think that was well, great. Well, I, I was thinking about taking the show down to uh, uh, one day a week. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't care whether it's a great yeah, idea or not. Me. It's a great, it's a terrific idea. <laughs> I mean, if I'm not going to get the participation from people, why shouldn't I? It just has to be an eight-hour show. If, oh, I see. Okay, yeah, an eight-hour show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, if I come on here and nobody calls the show, I mean, this is this is getting a little ridiculous now. You know, a couple well, of nights last uh, week we had a nice bunch of people, but, you know. Right now, well, three people. That's it. People are mourning the uh, loss of Barbara Bush. Oh, did she go? Yeah. 92. Oh, wow. Yeah. Who was a dead ringer for the Quaker Oats guy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Alex. Well, you know, she think about it. She spawned uh, her, uh, the, uh, the president all you guys hate, uh, especially Renee, you know. <laughs> I thought I I always liked Barbara Bush. I always thought she was the classiest one in the whole family. You know, uh, she was okay. You know, did she kill no. anybody? No. I, I know that, that uh, uh, Junior's wife killed this her boyfriend. You know, she ran over him in a car. Yeah, no, no, yeah, not just a car accident. No, it, oh. no, she no she. Uh, no, she it was she didn't run over him in a. It wasn't a boyfriend either. Sounds better that way. That's though. what I heard. <laughs> this yeah. was uh, this was uh, uh, um, what's her name? Bush, Laura Bush. Yeah. Laura, Laura Bush. Yeah, right. I thought yeah. she was just in a car accident no, at a stop I heard, sign. Or I heard she was going to stop sign and kill somebody. I think she ran over her boyfriend by accident or something. <laughs> I'll have to Google it. Right, well. yeah. you know, uh, that's what uh, Kennedy did. Uh, you know, he, he went off the road, drowned his uh, little girlfriend. 
Yeah, they made a movie of that yeah, now. But, you know, Jeff uh, Quick, uh, who's going to see that stupid movie? Well, Jeez. because it's got the revisionist theory. It's yeah. Got, yeah. No, it's got the more reason, reasonable theory of what happened. Uh, to begin with, he didn't even know she was in the back of the car. She just passed out in the back of the car. Yeah. Uh, what he, what, How did she what he had in the – wait a minute, hold on a second. <laughs> but you see, you're not listening to the story, Phil. Yeah. There was okay. another person in that car. That Ooh. person was giving him a blowjob? May well have been whatever. They were uh, – he was cheating. She was cheating on her husband. Oh. And so they then went into the drink – and no, they didn't even no. know that um, what's her name was in the back. Mary Jo Kopechny. Mary Jo Kopechny was it was in the back right. back seat, and they their whole thing was you swim that way and I'll swim that way so they won't think no we were together. Oh. And that's why all the cover up and everything it had nothing to do with the fact that he uh, you know had anything to do with Mary Jo Kopechny. Of course not. Yeah. No. Yeah. This is this, so this is supposedly who's this, third this, this is mystery third person. Uh, I don't know, but the, supposedly that's the true story of what happened. Uh, okay. Well, it makes perfect sense now. It didn't make yeah, sense. Well, the, how come it took 40, 50 years for the for this most of these, mystery person because to he, come forward? But no, because we had to wait for him to die for it to, for the truth to come out. He was me as soon as he got elected. <laughs> you know, but I mean, well, he became a good senator. He was a good senator. Yeah. You know, for, he, for, for, for Massachusetts, they loved him up there. They reelected him over and over again because he was doing the job for his, for his constituents. Yeah. yeah. yeah he looked out for elders. You just don't yeah. like him because he's a Kennedy, but he happened to be a, uh, he, he was the dumbest of the Kennedys, but he was a Kennedy. Mm. Yeah. Hey, I cracked up my sailboat in front of the Kennedy compound in Hyannis when yeah. I was a kid. I went yeah. sailing out there, and I tried to get close to the compound, and there was a giant rock uh, just uh, out there, and I didn't see it. And uh, my rudder board ran into it, and uh, it, I kind of sp spun around this rock, uh, and I didn't sink or anything. I, I, the boat righted itself, yeah. but I never went back to the Kennedy compound after that. Sunfish, Scott, Scott, Scott. Yeah, Scott. it was a sunfish. Scott, oh, yeah, Scott, Scott, Scott. A sunfish. Hey, Alex, did you see the Timeless on Sunday night? Yes. That was a good. That was, I liked that. That was cute. I, I like that show. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It show. was. It was a John Kennedy one. They went back and brought him back to the from the past in uh, when he was seventeen. Brought him to the present time, and it was. It was just. It was freaky, yeah. It was good. Yeah. Oh, I gotta check that out. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good one. It's a good yeah. show. It's a good show. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see here. What else is a good show? Uh, you know, what I'm watching. I'm watching the show called The Terror, about the ship. These two ships yeah. that went to try and find a Northwest Passage oh, and yeah, got that's... stuck in the middle of winter in in, in up up there, and yeah. and it's it's. Um, it was no fun to watch the other day because it was cold as shit outside. You know, I mean, we've had just terrible weather, and it's so it's not exactly the kind of thing you want to sit in the house and watch during terrible it's, weather. Is that the one that everybody died from eating uh, lead? <laughs> yes. Cans? Yeah. Yeah. The Lord Franklin. They expedition. just found they just yeah. found the boats just a few years ago. They found the terror, I think, in 2014, and they were able to determine that it was lead poisoning that killed them. But nobody was right. on the ship. They had all left the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you would think that if the ship was stuck in, an, in the ice thing, don't they usually uh, just get destroyed by the ice closing in well, on it? Well, that's what was happening to the ship. It was, it was, it, yeah. they were fighting against it, yeah. the, the ice crushing it. Uh, but, uh, you know, they had enough supplies with them for two years. They could have wow. survived up there for two years with the food they had, but they did it in these tins that were lead, and there was lead poisoning that started happening. Huh? How, how the, how the lids, lids were uh, soldered together. Yeah. They were made out of tin, but the, the lids were soldered. Yes. And so, that's where the lead came and from. And the solder was uh -huh. the lead. Yeah. Yeah. So this must have been a long time ago before they knew about the dangers of lead? 1850s. Oh, okay. Just last week. Yeah, just yeah. last week. Uh, but uh, uh, and the name of the ship was the Terror. 
Yeah, and, and the other okay. one was the Ubris or something like that. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, hey, the guy that invented uh, leaded gasoline uh, in New Jersey, he used to drink it to prove that it was safe. And, of course, he died of uh, lead you know, lead poisoning-related of... illness. Yeah. Who would he drink gasoline? Self- I mean, what? I'm going to drink gasoline to show that it's not, <laughs> not dangerous? Yeah. I mean, no, to say that leaded, non-leaded uh, gas at the is... factory were getting sick. And so he drank some uh, leaded gasoline, you know, a little bit to show that he, it was okay, that, you know, nothing happened to him. You and can't of course, be... he did get sick and died. You don't drink it was gasoline. Than the FTBE that they put in, that, uh, in the gas, that, that was worse. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, yeah. we're, we're going to go back to that soon because uh, the EPA is going to shit. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you, you got a, a stupid idiot sitting in the White House. We don't House have any of those restrictive uh, rules and regulations that keep people from dying. That that yeah, they, they just want a you know a little more of an even playing ground. Uh, even <laughs> playing field? What between life and death? No, yeah. between you know other no, countries because... that don't have <laughs> restrictions. Yeah. I don't uh, 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 I don't care if other countries don't have restrictions. We protect our own. Yeah, but just protecting our own doesn't protect the earth. No, not these no, other countries. No, we're not talking it, about protect. It, it, EPA it protects everybody. Yeah, it, what about the Chinese? Let the Chinese fuck up their country if they want to. They're not fucking up their country. They're fucking up the world. You think that plastic that's in the ocean uh, that that we're dealing with that uh, is? That, that, there's no plastic in the ocean. What are you talking about, man? Oh it's yeah! Great news. I don't believe any of that shit. Yeah, and you know, show me the plastic in the ocean. Yeah, you, 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 you. Where is it? But they but just I came up. An, they came up with an enzyme that actually eats some forms of plastic. You know, like the the plastic bottles and uh, and things like that. You know, that. anytime they come up with something like that, all I got to think about is is the cartoon I once saw about you know. The guy who has a problem with a mouse, so he gets a cat, and then he got a problem with a cat, so he gets a dog, and he has a problem with a dog, and he gets a lion. You know, I mean. Then if he really wants a problem, he gets a wife. Yeah. What's that enzyme going to do to the ocean? Uh, well, uh, they're they're working with it right now. Uh, some university in in England is uh, has come up with this enzyme, and. Uh, I don't know what this enzyme is going to do to the ocean, but what it does is it feeds on this one kind of plastic. What do they say? We have a we have a whole island of plastic out there that's big enough the size of Texas or something. There's no plastic out there, Alex. It's a myth. Oh, I no, see. Okay, I think it's, it's the fake size news. Of- fake news. Fake news. Fake news, man. It ain't true. Yeah. Hey, in uh, Oakland, in the port of Almeda, the uh, the old Navy base there, there's a giant boat that's going to leave pretty soon. Uh, that's going out uh, to the Pacific to collect. A bunch of that plastic. Uh, I forget what the name of the organization what is, they but have to do is yeah. get the wildlife. They cut. They take some of these birds that that their stomachs are so full of plastic yeah. that they starve to death. Yeah. But uh, and and when they cut the stomach open, you see all these different brightly colored pieces of plastic and 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 uh, little um, uh, bubbles of plastic. <laughs> It's just amazing. Ah, These hey, what, what would they find if fuck. they cut Trump's stu- stomach open? Yeah. <laughs> Big Macs. <laughs> Golf balls. Uh, and Kentucky Fried Chicken, I think. <laughs> hey, meanwhile, he's having, uh, Pompeo is having meetings with Kim Jong-un. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's high-level meetings going on right now uh, in a, as a precursor to uh, uh, Trump and Kim Jong Un. You know what? Uh, you know what? Summit. What? Somebody was going to say something. What I was going to say is what uh, Kim. Uh, well, yeah, but what does Kim Jong Un want out of this? Because he he wants the meetings, and it it doesn't have to do with uh, Trump. He wants a pro basketball team. It, it, it could be, but there's nobody tall enough in North Korea to do that with. But uh, yeah. uh, the, the um, he really what he wants out of this is what Trump is going to give him. And Trump is a sucker for this mm-hmm. kind of thing. He wants legitimacy and Trump is going to give it to him. 
that's okay. I don't care if he's legitimate as long as he gives up his uh, nuclear weapons. Well, uh, but as long as South Korea gives up theirs and the uh, Asian nations in that part of the world give up theirs as well. South Korea has nuclear weapons. I know China does, but I don't think South Korea does. I think they do. Mm-hmm. They, by way of us. That we, well, that we have, yeah, miss, that we have we missiles do. in South Korea. But we could move our missiles out. If they move their yes, missiles yes. out, why shouldn't we move well, ours out? Well, I mean, you know, this is what he's going to go for, and he wants legitimacy. He wants what he's going to be is going to happen is because Trump is now talking to him. You know, he, America is now talking to him. He's already won because he suddenly has become such a major power that we want to talk to him. Well, haven't we all won if uh, he gives up his nuclear I don't, weapons? I don't think that we lost. We would lose anything no matter what North Korea did because it's not a, it's not a basic threat to us, and I don't care what kind of hope. But it's, po- a, it's a threat to our allies, South Korea. It's a threat to Japan. Well, it's, a, it's not a threat to them either because the fact of the matter is if Kim Jong-un uses a missile on South Korea with a nuclear device in it, the next thing you know, there's going to be no more North Korea. All right? Want and he's not that stupid. He, the, that thing, right. the reason he doesn't want an escalation in all of this is he knows it's a war he can't win. So as long as he can't win the war, why not win the peace by coming to terms uh, uh, that are uh, uh, positive for him and gives him place on the world stage, which he wants. Well, with all of these sanctions that will be placed against China, the wood floor business is going to move to North Korea, and we're going to get a lot of cheap wood floors coming from North Korea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, China is really feeling those sanctions. They're really just smarting from them. Well, uh, you know, because, you know, they, there's, nowhere, uh, there's nowhere else in the world to sell your goods but the United States, is there? Uh, and not for the prices that they get for it, because they want U.S. dollars, but... Uh, as far well, as you don't think you don't uh, think they're happy with British dollars, Russian dollars, uh, uh, you know, dollars and, and money is money, Phil. Uh, yeah, our but, money isn't uh, if, 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 to begin with. The American dollar financially is backed by China because they have all of it because yeah. we owe them so much fucking money that if they ever wanted to, oh, call in the ticket. And repossess uh, things, uh, they'd be getting all of Florida. I'm sure it's of that. By God, and each one of them says, "In God we trust." And it's a good thing the we trust. The fact is, God. the fact it's is, a- the American dollar is not as important on the world stage as it once was. The fact is, China can trade in a, in a British pound or a Russian ruble. Or a, no, you know, though nothing is as stable as the U.S. dollar. Oh yeah. Oh t- really? Mm-hmm. And, and, and wait, the, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where did you hear that? It's been that way for the last hundred years. It's that <laughs> it's, it's stable. Yeah, it's, uh, how you m- heard of the year two thousand and eight, Phil? Right. Yeah. Well, you know, how m- it, you, there were always ups and downs, but what happens is uh, ups, we're not ups and downs is a racetrack in England. Hey, if you go if you go to South, uh, 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 what is that? Uh, the uh, Africa, South Africa, South Africa. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, White landowners are running away from their land because uh, the government is not is supporting them and their lands are being taken over uh, by the government and by people uh, and, and they're in fear of their lives. Well, you know, what does that have to do with this? Well, I tell you what it has to do with it. In America, that doesn't happen. Uh, if you own property, you have rights, and those rights are respected. Oh, really? Have you ever heard? Yeah. Have you heard, ever heard domain. about eminent yeah. domain? Eminent domain. Well, eminent domain is, is for the it's for the good of the people, not for the good of the government. Uh, uh, really? Well, it should be. It, it, yeah, it, it is. should be. Yeah, it's there for roads. It's there for you know. It's not there for shopping centers. If you're a big and corporation, I, you want a piece of land. Little mom and pop got a piece of land. They're going to get it. Okay, they're going to get it. It's yeah, just well, great you, know, somebody. you know what country are you living in, Phil? Well, I'm I'm living in a country. Are you living that, in Trump La La Land? I'm living in a country that doesn't nationalize all its corporations and and nationalize all of uh, the business. I'm, I'm all for nationalizing every corporation we've got. Fuck you it. know. I'm sure you are. You, you know, in Cuba, my friend just got thrown out of Cuba uh, this week. Uh, he had he had to leave. Uh, he did something that they didn't like. What was that? 
Well, he he brought in uh, fifteen hundred dollars worth of scooter batteries from uh, from from Florida, and he was going to sell them. And uh, somebody ratted him out. And well, he was doing uh, something illegal. He's black marketing. He's black yeah. marketing. Yeah. And oh, yeah, my friend got kicked out of Cuba. Oh, he's an idiot. Yeah, well, he had to leave <laughs> fast. And okay, his boat so was so so I'm supposed to feel sorry for him, and I'm supposed to feel the the, the, the Cuban people are terrible people because of this. Yeah, I think you like these kinds of guys, you know. You what? Hang out with criminals. And uh, well, what criminals did I ever hang out with? <laughs> well, uh, Abby Hoffman. Abby Hoffman wasn't a criminal. He was a political Abby activist. Abby Hoffman was a hero, man. Yeah. He was a he was a hero of the Vietnam War. He was a hero to who? He was a hero to yeah, that, those that of was, us who that, were protesting that, the war. That whole thing was a con job. Yeah. That whole thing was yeah. a setup. Right. All right. Oh, you telling me my government lied to me? <laughs> they lie all the time. Hmm. I.F. Stone said one: the main job of governments is to lie. Yeah. Well, hmm. uh, I, that's that's what I th that's what I thought about the Obama government. And oh, he did it too. He's a, he's a slime ball. Yeah, I don't and, have, yeah. and that's what I thought about uh, our present government. You know, as far as the Congress and and the Senate. And how about uh, the presidency? No, nah, oh, he, he tells, he the, tells the truth all the time, Alex. What are you talking about? You're that, crazy. Yeah, you're insane, Alex. The only no, guy tells the truth. You don't need me on the radio. Yeah, uh, you he's know the something. Only guy he, tells the it, truth. It, you know what it is? Trump is truth challenged. Yeah, you know, that's why you truth Twitter. challenged. Uh, he, well, he doesn't want his truth filtered by uh, the um, fake media. Yeah. yeah it, Trump is the king of fake. <laughs> I, I just wonder fake. how many illegitimate kids he does have. Yes, right. That, that's a question I really want to know. How many kids does he have out there? Well, who cares? Well, I don't know. They, each one costs them a million and a half dollars or something like that. <laughs> that. That's to get rid of. And that's probably a cheaper way to go than... Uh... <laughs> Listen, I, I wish I were a doorman in his fucking building because the doorman got $30,000 to keep his mouth shut that a maid at Trump Tower got knocked up by Trump. Yeah. Well, I thought... Uh, the maid this is the kind up. of moral character we need in the White yeah, House. he's the man. You well, know. you know, he was just sowing his wild oats before he became president. Not like, not before hey, look, he became president. It should be before you get we, married, Phil. We, we oh, had oh. a great Republican governor here, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he fooled around and screwed up his maid, <laughs> uh, and it totally ruined his life. You think he was great? I don't think he was so good. Uh... You know he uh, he got conned. There, you know he there, there that can be argued. I I'm not a Republican. I, I never my feeling Republican. my feeling about it is you just never yeah. vote for governor for anybody who was in Predator because we've already had two governors <laughs> here in the United States who were in the movie Predator. Yeah, Jesse Ventura and and uh, and and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Arnold, right? Yeah. They were also well, they were also both in uh, uh, what do you call it the uh, Running Man, so either of those movies, you know. <laughs> so. Hey, I can hardly wait for Taboo to come back. Man, I am just waiting. Taboo, Taboo is so cool. What's Taboo? Yeah. With Tom Hardy, it's a British show. Uh, oh, that uh, show, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's fantastic. Check it out. You could. Uh, I've I've seen it. I saw it probably before you ever did. You probably did. Yeah. yeah. What do you get advanced previews or something with your connections? You might say that. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do anything illegal. No, I wouldn't. Absolutely. <laughs> I, to go get those things <laughs> online <laughs> for free? Fuck it. <laughs> you know, hanging out with all of those criminals. And, uh, you know, yeah. and your friend Jack, locked up. You know? Yeah, he was locked up for two yeah. years. He was in prison. It happened to be a German prison camp. You know, it happened to be called <laughs> Auschwitz. Yeah, three hots in a cot. You know, yeah, well, yeah, no well, cot. Yeah, you don't make no jokes. Believe me, you don't make jokes about it. Last week was not a good week for Jack. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we yeah. had lunch with him on the day that he was liberated. And oh, he geez. was, and he was miserable. And I said to him, "You should be happy. That was the day you were." liberated and he mm -hmm. said no that's the day you find out all the people you loved are dead 
Mm. Yeah. Oh, he had no contact with anyone? Well, uh, well you'll, you'll find out, I think, back. in episode three, he does meet up with his father one last time. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, but, I mean, um, it was not an easy day for him. I mean, we were there on the day of his liberation. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, not, yep. not fun. Good. Let That's me see. The other How's my look picture looking? Does my picture look good? It's a 4K camera, folks. <laughs> it looks the same to I me. I figured as long yeah, as we had to put out $5,000 to the government, I should buy myself a $159 camera. Fuck it. You know? <laughs> you make yourself larger on the uh, on the YouTube thing? What you mean? Well, I watch, sometimes I watch the YouTube thing on... Um, no, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the YouTube thing on the phone. Yeah. And a little small square. Court is a very, very small square. And so what I wanted to do was, if you could make yourself larger, I, oh, well, okay, that's it. Yeah, uh, larger than life. Uh, I, I don't notice that big of a difference between your old camera and this one. Well, do you see my, uh, you don't see me on the camera, though, the camera alone. Well, oh, there we go. Okay, well, you, you, you may not notice it there. I bet if you know, if you blow it up on a big 4K TV set, you'll notice a difference. You look great. Yeah. You look I amazing. know, fuck him. Fuck him. Yeah. He's an idiot. Look, yeah. And he oh, takes pictures for a living? Huh? And he takes a good picture when he sees one. Well, I'm watching it on the phone. Yeah. Uh, if you know, if you know, right. if you notice, I mean, like if Scott said, the books in back of me, you can actually read the names. Or the I, I was reading DVDs. labels on his book or titles on his uh, DVDs that's, in the back. That's because yeah. you're younger than us. Got glasses on. <laughs> younger. Yeah. But uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, Sorry, I don't know. I don't oh, you were bragging about your camera. No, I was just every now and then putting it on so I get my money's worth. Hey, hey how, how's Larry Harvey from Burning Man? Had a guy I, had a massive stroke uh, last week I, or I, something. I have no yeah. idea. I haven't talked to Larry Harvey in thirty years or twenty years or something like that. Huh. Yeah, that's what it's got to be. Yeah, twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I met him uh, in two thousand and three. Larry Harvey's the guy who started Burning Man. He had a massive yeah. heart attack. No, a massive stroke. Ma well, stroke, heart attack, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess he started it in San Francisco on the beach. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's where it started. Baker Baker Beach. I'm proud to say I've never gone to a Burning Man. Well, I was there in the in the second, what was the second year that it was in the desert? Wow. And went, went two more times yeah. while it was in the desert. And yeah. we said we would keep going. My friend and I said we would keep going until somebody got killed. And mm -hmm. that year, three people got killed. Wow. And, yeah. and uh, we knew it was over. And up at that point, there were maybe 10,000 people showed up. It's like 60,000. Yeah, yeah, now it's 60. Yeah. Yeah, limited uh, to a sort of a lottery or something? No, it's, it's what they're charging to get in. I don't think they have to have a lottery. I think that you know they just raise the price if it, if it if more and more people get in. Was it four hundred, five hundred dollars now? Yeah, it's almost five hundred bucks now. Yeah, last yeah. time I, I went, mean that's if you get an early. Ticket. Last time I went, it was twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you try to buy a ticket now, you're going to have to pay close to a thousand bucks. Wow. How much was Woodstock? Free. Well, free, what? No, it free. was. It became free. Yeah, yeah. It became free. It became yes. free. I think, if I remember correctly, Woodstock was like fifteen bucks, twenty bucks, something like that. I was living in New York at the time, and I said to my friend Barry, I said, you know, maybe we should go. And then I said, you know, he's nah, <laughs> and we didn't go. It's too bad. I, I would have enjoyed that. Well, when I went up there, I went up there. I actually got my car onto the property because yeah. because I was back when it was backstage. And, um, but I had to turn around and leave on Saturday, uh, to, uh, come back to San, to New York to do my Saturday night show because the radio station, here's what happened. I talked to the people who are going to run Woodstock and I said, Hey, listen, if could we have your permission to run a line in there, in those year, days we use telephone lines to broadcast through, we run a line wow, in yeah. there. And uh, I can do my show from from the festival, and they said, "Fine, that'd be great. We're all for it. Have you you have our permission?" So I go to my bosses and I say, "Okay, I got the rights 
to put a line in to backstage at, uh, at the Woodstock Festival, and I could do my show from there. And they said, ah, what's the Woodstock Festival going to be? <laughs> well, if we had a telephone line back there, we would have been the only media in the, in the world to have yeah. a live feed coming out of Woodstock, and we could have charged a fortune for anybody else to use it. You could have been a star, Alex. Yeah. No, we could have made a. We, the, the radio station could have made a fortune. Yeah. Could have, would have, should have made a fortune. It was. And, it was eighteen dollars for a three day pass to the Woodstock. Really, eighteen dollars. Yeah. So I hey, mean, I wonder how it, much one of those tickets would be worth now. You know, at auction, if if you had a, a ticket in good condition. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, so we had to. Uh, I had to go back on uh, on Saturday, and uh, uh, the person that came with me because I have a car and he didn't uh, was uh, was Paul Krasner because he had to come back because he had wanted he was dating a woman in New York and he had a date for Saturday night so he left the Woodstock Festival to get laid. <laughs> That's kind of like taking Coles to Newcastle, but you know. Uh, but I, I uh, you know, that, that, was, that was one play. I, and finally, after that whole weekend, I went into my bosses and I said, well, you just blew making a lot of money. He said, I said, do you realize how much I could have done reports every hour on the hour? We could have sent them out and syndicated to the rest of the country and they could get these reports from us. But no, you didn't want to do that because what was it going to be? And, you know, putting in a line in those days would cost 100 bucks. You know, it was cheap. But it was, how do you get a line from the street all the way uh, to uh, wherever the well, stage Well, because they had, they had phone lines going into the press tent. Ah. Uh, so it's just a matter of taking it from there. Uh, right? Creating another phone line, but just a higher quality phone line than the uh, telephone shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'll never forget, though, my greatest moment at Woodstock was backstage in the press tent. Where I was sitting there... Was, Abby and I and Jerry Rubin and I think Krasner was with us. And we're just talking about stuff. And all of a sudden, one of these guys from the press, wearing a tie and a, you know, a shirt and the whole thing, you know, stands up and says, I need a quote from an average concert goer. And he points at Abby and he says, you, give me a quote. <laughs> yeah, and gosh. Abby said, this is in his Boston accent. I think this is the greatest event since the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And the reporter then sits down oh, at his typewriter oh. and starts typing it. <laughs> Doesn't uh, know who was saying it to him or whatever, you know. Oh, he didn't get the guy's name? No, he didn't get his name. He just wanted an average concert goer. <laughs> an average concert goer. Yeah, like goer. you ask for an average concert goer in the press tent at Woodstock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, who's, who's going to be average in the press tent? Yeah. So anyway, it was you know, uh, but that 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 was you know I I to this day I think about how much money they blew on that. You know, they could have done so well. It turned into such an event. Now, uh, were you not uh, aware, like uh, during the Monterey Jazz Festival, for instance? Which I wasn't. Was, I wasn't oh, on the West Coast, so I didn't even care about yeah. it. I didn't even. Yeah. You know. Oh, was it okay? Yeah. You know, because th that was, you know, that was a great event, too. Yes, but that, not like Woodstock. It was a different kind of event. It was yeah. to begin with, it was kind of like an arena event or even less than that in size. Yeah. Woodstock was, listen, and, until they started telling the public, don't come, there were up to a million people headed towards Woodstock. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I think there were at least over 100,000 that were there. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, it was it was it was it was really it it, it was quite something. It turned into something they didn't um, they didn't realize. They didn't think it was going to turn into that. I didn't think it was going to turn into that. I thought it was just going to be a nice festival up in Woods. It was supposed to be in Woodstock. That's why it was called the Woodstock Festival. And the city of Woodstock said you can't do it here. So yeah, they so moved you did it on some guy's farm. They moved it to Maxie Max Asger's farm on, in Bethel which is a few miles down the road. But they kept the name the Woodstock Festival because they had already given it that name. So they just they just kept that name. 
Uh, yeah. But it wasn't the Woodstock Festival. It was the Bethel Festival. So, uh, it was, uh, you know, the music that came out of that was uh, phenomenal. And the uh, act came out of it. No, no acts really came out of that. Yeah, you know, they were uh, already they were already established acts in the business. It was just amazing they were able to get all the ones that they wanted. I mean, there yeah. were there were p people that turned them down. You know, they invited the Rolling Stones. I think they invited the Beatles. They wow. invited quite a few. Uh, uh, you know, I th the Who did show up though. They didn't uh, invite yeah, me. You know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jimi Hendrix, Star Spangled Banner was just one of the most amazing things. Ever, I mean, it was just pure genius, and so expertly performed. And I think it's it's uh, it's one of the pinnacles of of that era. I would say is his Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock. Yeah, but well, I knew a guy, Jim Marshall, was a photographer. And, Here we go uh, again with the he, Jim Marshall story. Shot Jimi Hendrix setting his uh, guitar on fire at the Monterey uh, Pop Festival, and what happened was. Uh, Jimi Hendrix actually gave him the heads up and said, "You're going to want to. You're going to want to see this." And then he said, uh, "He set the guitar on fire, and uh, Jim got the shot, and mm. an iconic shot." Uh, but uh, you know, this is one act. Okay, that, well, we can hardly wait till your next Jim Marshall story. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, Jim uh, Jim Marshall was a, uh, a pretty interesting guy. Uh, he drank a little bit much, uh, and if you didn't drink with him. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was not a pretty sight, and I you know, the first time I met him, uh, yeah, he says you want a drink? I said yeah, I'll have a glass of wine. He says no, 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 it's scotch, and uh, I was not a scotch drinker, and so between uh, the dope, the scotch, and the cigarettes, uh, I couldn't take. Yeah, well, I mean, there there are those people who don't want to be an alcoholic alone. Yeah, you know? well, he and he wanted you to keep up with him. And there was no way I could do that. Uh, what's his name? The, the, the actor. Oh, God. My mind is just a fucking blank. He just died recently. Um, uh, Cirrhosis? Old, old, craggy, western-type guy. Um, oh. oh, fuck. I could think of one movie he was in. I'd look it up right now. My mind's yeah. just a blank. But he was one of those because he wanted me to go out with him and get drunk one night. And I, somebody said... Don't go with him. Do not go with him. You do not want to go on a drunken binge with him. He yeah. said, it will come to no good. Your <laughs> life will be turned to hell. And so I, I didn't, you know, but I've, I've had other people who, who I've known who are like, they really want you to join their alcoholic binge. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've and never that's, been, uh, that's I've, what Jim Marshall was like. I've never been a drinker, you know. Yeah. So <clears throat> I... Give, you know, I, you just wouldn't find me going out on an alcoholic binge. Yeah, I, I like two glasses of wine at dinner, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. I can't even do that. I have a half a glass of wine, and I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I used to have a friend named Pat Sky who was a folk singer mm -hmm. uh, who I produced an album on um, called Songs That Made America Famous. And... Um, Pat was he was he, he was kind of a boring guy and then he would get a couple of drinks in him and he was really the funniest guy you ever met in your life <laughs> and amiable yeah. and wonderful and then he'd have another drink and he was still amiable and wonderful but then he hit a certain tipping point and he became the meanest nastiest fuck you could even be around at that point you said this is when we sneak out the door you know yeah. he's great to be around up to this point but you don't want to be there when he gets to the next point, you know. Weird, yeah. People are weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, even if I do get drunk, I'm the drunk that falls asleep on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I don't even. I, I think I just become. I don't even like to smoke pot that much anymore because I get very unsociable with pot. I'm unsociable enough as it is. You know, last night, Marjorie and I had to go to this birthday party for this friend, and I sat in the corner alone, and I was happy when Jack Garfine showed up because then we sat there alone, not, <laughs> not being part of the party, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, his girlfriend and my wife are out socializing with everybody, and we're just sitting there going, yeah, you know. Yeah, you were just the eye candy. 
And then I said to him, so how you feeling, Jack? And he said, Trump's depressing me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I thought he'd be a Republican. He said, I've, he said, you know, he said, he said, I've seen this all before. He said, I don't yeah. like seeing it happen again. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. First, they burn the books then they take away the guns and, uh, you know, I, taking away the guns <laughs> has nothing to do with it, Phil. Take, yeah. Taking away liberty is what it's all about. And also using people as scapegoats for your own ends is the other terrible part. I mean, what's going on right now is as depressing as anything I've ever seen in the presidential office. And I've seen a lot of depressing stuff in my time. So who's he scapegoating, Comey? Let's start the, with the Mexicans, okay? Let's start with people of race and color who he says, oh, well, they're just as much default as the white guys who were in that riot. You no, know? Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's uh, very true, did, Phil. Yeah. He didn't, uh, uh, his narrative on that, I think, was weak. Uh, you know, as far as... You know, a, president, uh, a president of the United States who says words about somebody like he wrote about Comey is just disgusting. Oh, yeah. You got Call to, me right about him. Wait a minute. He's Doesn't the matter. Office. You're the president of the United States. You should yeah. have more dignity than that. Oh, well, I guess he doesn't have dignity. You know? He doesn't. What, yeah. do you, what do you call Comey? A slime bag or something? Like that? Slime bag. Yeah. Slime bag. yeah. You know, slime. I mean, what it's president What president ever uses that kind of language to describe somebody he right. disagrees yeah. with? A slime bag. A, a slime bag Queens. president. Hey. Well, well, you know something? Uh, it... Trump is just existing in this fishbowl of our declining culture and society anyway. I mean, he never would have risen to the point where he had risen had not American culture declined to such a point. So he's he's swimming right, John. in, in all this. We to, all we can do is blame ourselves. No, uh, I think we could blame uh, corporate culture, which has taken over this country. I mean, my wife and I were just talking about that today. There's no regulation in this country anymore because uh, corporations are the people that staff the regulatory agencies. They go in and out. Look at the, this asshole that, that's uh, in charge of the uh, FAA now, uh, uh, you know, Pro by, uh, net neutrality and all that. I, I mean, he was a, a Verizon executive. By the, way, we, by the way, we're losing a member of the FCC, but by law, I think, or by FCC, tradition, yeah. has to be replaced by a Democrat, so. Yeah, oh. good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, but I mean, we have just a corporate government now. You now, know, and how has net neutrality, values. net neutrality, how has it affected the uh, net at this point? You know, well, uh, it's we, too early for it to have any effect. Yeah. It has, I right. don't think even the rule has gone into effect yet, I don't has think it's it? It's gone into effect. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, uh, you, you're going to, you're going to, you're not going to see an immediate degradation of the internet. Not overnight. You know, it's not like you're turning on a light switch. Yeah. But you will, over a period of a couple of years, start to see uh, major corporations monopolizing the Internet and taking it basically away from the little guy like me, uh, like John, um, who, who use it for our own small little dog and pony shows. Uh, it, it, it's going to be it's going to be a lot yeah. rougher, you, you know. What? Like that gal on YouTube, the uh, exercise gal. Well, her problem was, her problem with YouTube was that YouTube changed the method of payment to people. Yeah, and but how they, were, how they were paying, how they were paying somebody a living. Huh? When did YouTube ever promise somebody a living? Well, they promised it the minute they said, we're willing to pay you by the viewers that you have. So yeah. in doing they, that, they, no, in doing that, they gave people expectations of being able to earn a living. And so then they went out and earned a living. But all of a sudden, that living was minimized from what it had been. So they don't exactly have the right to do that to their people. You know? Yeah, but this is common uh, in, in business where they put out a carrot. Uh, they get their content, well, no, and but, once but, they build but, it to a point that they don't need it anymore, uh, they I, cut it I, off. I think there are other ways they probably could have substantially lowered the amount of money that people were making while keeping the people that were already there kind of vested, you know, because they had made that promise to them and made that deal with them. 
and then change the existing rules that you have to have so many viewers to be able to start with it. And once you do, here's the percentage we're going to give you. But if you're if you're vested up to this point with a channel that you have, it remains like it now, has I, been. I don't have a YouTube channel, and you do. Did you sign a contract, or did you make some sort of contract that says uh, that outlines if you have this many viewers, this many views, and so forth? Or was that no, just a no. colloquial way of dealing with things that they were no, trying to buy content? No, no. That only happens when you reach a certain amount, and then they will start giving you money. But, yeah, but, they, you, but you have to. You, but you at that no. point have to sign up as a. I can't remember what the term is. Uh, as a, uh, a participant or a, uh, a, a co monetizer, a, a monetizer or whatever. Yeah, but you yeah. have to sign up for the monetization. Uh, <laughs> I don't have enough people. I don't have enough people to to even start with that monetization or to even run ads on my site. You know, on mm -hmm. my on my YouTube uh, page. I think I could probably run commercials in the middle of this, but. You know. Oh, you'd you'd go down to like two viewers if you started doing okay. that. I, I hate those little YouTube commercials that they come up and they block the lower third of your screen, and you about, you have to click something to get it off. And what about you know, John, when you're watching something and yeah. then thirty seconds into it, it makes you watch a commercial until you can finish watching the thing that you were watching. Uh, by right. the way, yeah. let me let me th let me tell you that those those commercial breaks are put in by the people who are giving you uh, the video. Uh, yeah, they they yeah. they they, they decide how many breaks they want to have in their in their show. Now, if I did a show, I'd probably say no. You know, run an ad before, run an ad afterwards. But sometimes they will run an ad before these shows if I uh, violate any copyrights. They yeah. will use that yeah. to pay the copyright yeah. holder money. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of times when that's happened, uh, they still don't run a video beforehand, but they have the right to do that so that the copyright holders can monetize the use you of that music. Do you have anything that's copyrighted? Huh? Do you own anything that's uh, that's copyrighted? That uh, Everything I do is copyrighted. Right. So if, if we violate those things, they'll pay you money? What do you mean? No, well, no, uh, no, said... no, 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 no. We're talking about music. Yeah. We're talking about music. Yeah. Music or videos. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said, do you have anything that's copyrighted? You know, music. Well, well, no, but this, this show is basically, it's co every show is copywritten. Yeah. Hey, Alex, uh, what do you think of mesh networks, you know, as an alternative to the uh, Internet? You know, if the Internet ever gets I never, so I don't, know, I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, it's what uh, the military uses in a battlefield situation, uh, that every computer or every workstation is connected in a closed network. And if one uh, unit goes down, the, the network keeps working. But neighborhoods can set up a mesh network, like too. A private area network? or Yes, yeah. And uh, I, I'm, I might think that we may see the emergence of that if... Uh, the corporate entities start, uh, you know, uh, regulating in their way because of loss of net neutrality, I, I, what I we can do on the Internet. John, I, I would think that the corporations already use those kinds of things for their, you know, these large corporations have employees and they sign on to their own network for training and, and other yeah, things. Yeah, that's true. And also the Internet is used uh, as a tremendous uh, e uh, e-commerce tool now. I mean, there's so much, uh, uh, you know, buying of stuff now. That I mean, we're, a mall in my neighborhood shut down. A uh, uh, mall in Philadelphia, a friend of mine, big mall, uh, that that went out of business. Yeah, but the mall and, shut down the mom and pop stores, so fuck them. Yeah, you know exactly. You yeah, with? well, it's karma, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, it, it, everything yeah. is going to be replaced by something else eventually. Yeah. And you have Al to get yeah. used to it, and you have to adapt to the new technology. You know, Alex, did you read that book I sent you? No, not yet. I have uh, it it's sitting. Very interesting one. Yeah, like and I have time to read books. Perfect one. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> hey. Oh wow, we're finished. I'm yeah, finished. it was painless. I mean, we had a nice little discussion here. Fuck them all if they didn't want to call and join in on it. Yeah, give them the big fuck you sign, Scott. Look at him. That's a vi <laughs> That's a vibrant <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, I like well, that. Trump does it this way. 
Yeah, he does it. Uh, he he, do, he he does it by sticking a, the rod up your ass is what he winds well, that, up that's doing. That's how he used to grab him by the pussy and stick his thumb up. That's there. correct. Anyway, hey everybody, why don't you give him a big uh, wave goodbye and we'll say goodnight. We'll see you on Wednesday, uh, Phil. Okay, bye. That's it. That's our uh, that's our uh, little group for tonight. Let me uh, hang up on them so that we don't have to. Uh, uh, so the next show can use the. Uh, Skype channels that we have here. Hey, that's it. Hey, how do you like my new camera, huh? Isn't that, isn't that fine? See, you can probably see the hairs on my hand here. What's left of them. I'm, I'm not growing hair anymore. My legs don't have any hair on them any longer. I don't know. Ah! That's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. Coming up next, uh, it is the intersection with Jack and Amy. That will be followed closely by uh, the Connections. At 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow night, 9.30, it's The Exchange with Damian Chaplin, and then I'll be back here tomorrow night. Yes, you know the time. Yeah, uh, 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in live, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Bye.